Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Red Dragon K631 Caster keyboard that was sent over to me by Red Dragon themselves. Now as of right now, this keyboard goes for $49.99 on Amazon. Inside the box, you get the keyboard covered in PE foam. You get a non-braided USB-C cable. This keyboard comes with hot swappable red linear switches that do use a dust proof stem and you get the manual for the keyboard. Now the weird part about this keyboard is that the USB-C connector is on the left side of the keyboard. And then the other thing I noticed is that the shift key on the right side of the keyboard is not the correct size. I don't know why they didn't just give you the correct size shift key, but I just thought that was kind of funny. And with that out of the way, here is a quick stock sound test for you guys to hear how it sounds right out the box. So it honestly doesn't sound that good, of course. This keyboard is 50 bucks, so I didn't expect a lot going into it. The one thing I was surprised by was the fact that this keyboard does not have a lot of ping at all, if any. And that is mainly because the plate is not steel, it is a plastic plate. Obviously it's not the most high quality plastic or it's not a polycarbonate or palm plate, but it is a plastic plate. So that is why you don't get that resonance or ping from something like a steel plate that you would get on an RK61, for example. In my opinion, that is a pro because it sounds better right out the box. The keycap quality here is not the greatest at all. The shine through is pretty good, but when it comes to the thickness and the way they sound, they sound very plasticky and cheap, and the thickness is very, very thin. So not a big fan of the keycaps. Also, the fact that they have a bunch of stuff going on on them kind of ruins the aesthetic or look of this keyboard. Now, when it comes to the RGB effects, the RGB on this keyboard is actually pretty bright and it looks very nice so i am a big fan of that the other thing i noticed while recording is that the rgb on does interfere with usb microphones i don't know why keyboards do that but some of them do and this is one of them the stabilizers right out the box are rattly but for some reason the smaller stabilizers for the backspace enter key and shift key are honestly not horrible like they're pretty easily fixable now Let's get straight into modding. What am I going to do to this keyboard? Well, the first thing I wanted to do is figure out how to take it apart. By doing that, all you have to do is take off all the keycaps and switches because this is a hot swap board that does support up to five pin hot swap. Once you have done all of that, you can unscrew all the screws on the top plate. And the weird part about this keyboard is the plate is sort of like connected to the top of the keyboard. So instead of running your card or something through the bottom of the keyboard, like you would do on more traditional boards you run it on the top to try to pry it from the case and then you have to open it up now this did take me a couple tries because it is kind of hard to do so i didn't really get it on camera but once i got it i just made sure i did everything that i needed to do before putting it back together because i was not going to go through the hassle of doing that again now the bottom of this case is pretty hollow of course so i'm going to be adding my clay mod that i recently made a video on and i think this just does a wonderful job and i think it does a better job than foam because not only does it make it sound better but it also adds a little bit more weight to it and adds a fuller sound signature to this keyboard once i did all of that the next thing i wanted to do was tape mod i found that two layers of tape works best for most keyboards so that is what i went with here i made sure to not tape the usb-c connector or those little batteries you see on the motherboard now at first i was sad that there was no plate foam in this keyboard but once i finished the whole build i realized it honestly didn't need it it sounded very good without it and you will see what i'm talking about later on in the video when you get to the final sound test but the next thing i wanted to do was obviously work on the stabilizers all i really had to do is take them apart and surprisingly enough they were lubed already which is quite interesting 
The lube job was very light of course, it didn't really do much but you know hey props to them for actually lubing their stabilizers even if it's not that much. So then I decided to do dielectric grease on the wires and do 205 grade 0 for the housing and stem. Once I did that I wire balanced the wires of course and made sure there was no ticking. Then I put everything back together and I had to put band-aids on the plate itself because the stabilizers did wobble a bit once all that was said and done. I put all the stabilizers back together and made sure that they sounded great. And I was very pleasantly surprised that they did. So once I figured out that you know everything I wanted to do was basically complete, I ended up putting this keyboard back together. And the switches I use for this build are the Agile Moon Linear Switches that I recently made a video on. And if you are interested in that review video, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. The reason why I use these switches is not only because they feel good and sound good, but also because they are long pole switches and I wanted to use a Cherry Profile keycap set. And if you don't have a long pole switch, you will run into some Cherry Profile interference where the keycap sounds kind of weird on the AS. DF row and I didn't want to run into that issue because this keyboard is a north facing PCB. The keycaps I am using are the Kinetic Labs Polycaps Candy Shop. I think these keycaps are underrated. You know, they kind of grew on me a lot. I think they look very interesting and the color pop looks very nice, especially on a blackboard. Once I did that, the whole product was basically complete. Here is a final sound test of this keyboard modded. Overall, I think this keyboard is pretty decent if you're willing to put in the hard work and time and effort that it takes to make it good. But right out the box, I would say it does need a lot of work. Now if Red Dragon were to update this keyboard in the future, I do think they should still add plate foam. Just because a lot of people would prefer to have it right out the box and it would make for a better stock typing experience. Let me know what you guys think about this keyboard in the comments down below and I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below if you did want to check it out. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.